Hey, welcome back. We're underneath the 3500 Dodge work truck, and now it's time to go ahead and put in our airlift airbags. Now, the factory bump stops out of the way, and that's a good thing because we're going to use that mounting point for our mount for our airbags. Now, this will simply go up in place in that same location, and then our airbags will simply bolt on to it. It's a pretty easy install, and that's why we like this kit. All right, so now our mounting bracket's in place. All we do is bolt in our airbag to it. You know, we've worked with some in the past that are a bit more cumbersome. It require you to take off the whole bed and do a lot of cutting and channeling and chopping. And this simply bolts into place, which is great. So the airbag is set into place. All we have to do now is tighten it down. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Now, one thing you'll notice is the bag right now seems like it's too short. Don't worry, well, once we get both set into place, we'll bring the truck back down on the ground. It'll put a little load on the suspension and it'll compress the bag. At that point, we'll use these straps underneath around the bottom of the axle here like that. And our whole airbag itself install will be done. With one of the bags already in place, now we're ready to set the location for the compressor. And we want to find a good spot that is up and out of the way. And this corner is going to work real nice. So this is going to be where the compressor finds its home, way up here out of the way, out of sight, out of mind. All we have to do is power it up and wire it in. Now, fortunately, the kit comes with more than enough wire to run it from the compressor all the way up to the front. Pretty cool. All the wire that you need is right there. It's all clearly marked. The wiring on this is a very easy job. Now, and it gets easier for us because we've got this. What this is, it's a little plug that he used to charge up the batteries on the dump trailer. Now, he wants to redo the wiring on that because it's not big enough to operate the dump trailer, and that's what he wants. So he's going to rewire that so he can run the dump trailer off the batteries in the truck. And for him, this is going to be useless. So what we're going to do is actually tap into that, splice it up to the compressor, and it's already run up to the front. So that makes life a little bit easier. We'll also use this. This is the keyed power right here. So we'll wire that to the compressor, run it up to the front as well. Good thing is, like we said, the wiring on this, whether you've got this or not, the wiring's a pretty easy deal. So now I just got to drill some holes and get this compressor in its home. <laughs> Now we can mount the manifold, which is actually the piece that reads the information from the remote that you send it. Now let's face it, once you get this hooked up, you're probably going to play for about an hour, putting the bags up and down and up and down because it's fun. So the information that you send from the remote goes here to the manifold and this controls how much air goes into and out of the bags. Now per the directions, you only want to mount this one of two ways. You either want to mount it like this or like this. We're going with this method right here. Now on the back side, you've got this little protrusion and actually you got to drill a hole for that nice and easy. We did that right up in here. So when we get ready to mount this, that protrusion will go into the hole and that'll keep it orientated and that way it's not going to spin around on you. They give you a big self-tapping screw here to mount through this hole and that'll hold everything in place. So we're just wrapping up the final steps of our airlift airbag installation. Now we got to do some plumbing, a little wiring, and we need to put in this heat shield. Now I know it doesn't look like much, but it can really save you because this airbag runs close to this exhaust and you do not want it to melt. So it simply goes in place with two little band clamps here, and that is about it. You know, one thing we did mention about the folks at Airlift is the fact that they stand behind their products with a lifetime warranty. You really can't beat that. Now we've got the airlines hooked into the tops of the bags and we brought them back over here. But real quick, Bruno mentioned these Schrader valves too. So we've got these back here and we're going to let our buddy decide what he wants to do with those because realistically he could just tie them up out here and have them. Maybe he'll drill a hole and, and, and mount them back here through the bumper. Who knows? That is going to be entirely up to him. In the meantime, here come our two supply lines down here and we just have to hook these into the little T-valve right up there. Now this one's just about the right length so we really don't need to cut it. That one will be alright but this one is a little bit long. Now keep this in mind, when you're cutting this, these fittings are perfectly round. So if you've got, let's say, you've got a set of these laying around the shop, they're probably old, probably not quite so sharp and you go ahead and, and cut this, boom, okay, so there it goes. Now you've egged it all out. It's like a little football. It's not gonna be perfectly round, and that's not gonna work. You wanna use the right thing, which is either gonna be a razor blade or a special tool like this, which is essentially a razor blade. Boom, done. That is nice and round. It's not footballed out. All right, so we'll get our length where we want it, which is about right there. We'll snip that, okay, that's out of the way. And once we make these connections, we'll be ready to start playing with our wireless controller. <laughs> 